Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the Bipcot NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lowbirds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this could be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal action from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at lulberts.com. Lulberts, that's our word. Brought to you by Bipcot and Fiendfo. Music by 3chainlinks.com. Got Steve Miller Miller back. Uh, we're supposed to have Nick, but I don't know what happened to him. He just disappeared. Uh, and then I got you. Nick got so. a case of the smoke. <laughs> He's got some, something's wrong with his I neck. subbed in for Nick on the feeds. I, I randomly got off of work earlier than expected, so I had emailed the powers, the powers that be. And I said, hey, I can come on the show tonight. And they said, sure. And then uh, Nick was buffering hard on Kensington G, Kenny G, and was unable to do the show. So it was just a full-on Miller Miller for Nick Hazleton swap, which is a really, really bad trade if you <laughs> are trying to keep animals alive. Yeah. He, he's got all those yaks going, but I don't know. Hopefully we'll have him on next time. Like, he always fascinates I've, me. But... He's got yaks, and I'm surrounded by death. Yeah, I've been try- I'm trying to kind of so. balance out as many fiends as I can, but Matt has been kind of busy. Actually, he got the plague. Uh, and then... Bubonic or non-bubonic? I, I'm not sure. We have to check. Uh, I don't want to give that's out what false they say- That's what the hostess says when you walk into the plague restaurant. <laughs> she, says that, she says, how many in your party, or will that be bubonic or non-bubonic? And then, and then we had, uh, then we have uh, MK Lord who, who just moved to San Diego, and her apartment sounds like a cave, like it echoes. And that, and I think she's in Joshua Tree right now. So we got, had to put on that. We need she, to get her some Bipcot tapestries. I know. Yeah, I went to Walmart and I bought like a whole bunch of them for like forty bucks, and I just started nailing them up on my wall with like little penny nails or whatever they're called. I don't know what they're called. What kind of old white women live in your neighborhood that your Walmart will sell $40 worth of tapestries? You'd be hard-pressed to find a loan tapestry in the South Philadelphia Walmart. You know what you wouldn't be hard-pressed to find? Kids getting beaten. But they're just they're just pure black. They're not they don't they don't have like crazy uh like yeah, I know I know I've seen like these little empty Are you talking lots. about the kids or the tapestries? They're Either bo- way. Both. Uh <laughs> <laughs> They're just blank. Someone tried black. to sell their kid in the parking lot of these of of the South Philadelphia Walmart, and you know how much they wanted to. Let's play a little game, Jim Jesus. How well, let guess how much was the kid being sold for in the South Philadelphia Walmart? Well, well if it's in South Philly, it's not going to be as much as like say Vegas or even North Philly or or even a good. Yeah, part I will. Of I will. I'll, that'll be the one hint I give you is that it's not a. You're not paying those big Manhattan. South Beach type prices for your kid if you're for for a, a black market baby for buying it at the South of the Walmart. How much was it? Uh, I'm guessing it's going to at least be as much as a round of groceries, or a, a, at least enough enough uh, H two like kind of overcome the the burden of you selling off your kid. So I'm probably going to go probably in the eighty dollar range selling your kid. That's probably about, that's probably about 50 right. Fifty bucks. Fifty. Bucks. Wow, is groceries yeah. really that cheap out there? Or is heroin it's really that gro- cheap? Uh, it's a Walmart's got that supply chain right. Mm-hmm. So they could, they could get the kids faster, and yeah, that's why Walmart's going to wind up building the roads. Are people taking notes on this? This is an important episode that makes serious points about anarchy, and if this episode, when we link it, is not festooned with Facebook likes by every single person listening, you're absolutely nothing other than a common thief you have stolen from us you've stolen us the praise and adulation that we as millennials are entitled to because we have a podcast so get out there like this episode and share it because it's your job to make us famous and please donate yeah and it's really important when next time the status goes hey what about the roads now you know you sell your kids for crack and then that money uh, crack and food and that money goes to walmart and then walmart builds the roads it's really that simple 
There's no, there's no, no need for DROs, no need for, you know, for deed restrictions, none of that. So it's really that simple. So you baby for if crack. You're not, and, and if you're not pregnant with a kid that you completely intend to sell at the South Philadelphia Walmart, you're not part of the solution. Straight yeah, up, you're part of the problem. You're part of the problem. Yeah. Go yeah. go vote for Trump. We we don't have room for you. <laughs> they tried to sell me a kid down there, and this is back when I had first started the Freedom Fiends, and I asked if if the child was covered by a BIP kid, uh, no government license. It was a BIP. It's a BIP tot. <laughs> it's a bip tot. Yeah, that was probably why they looked at me all askance. Is because because I'd use I'd use the incorrect nomenclature. Dang, do you even bip cop, bro? Yeah, I know, right? Trying to buy a black market baby, don't even know the words. To, to mm-hmm. be fair, I, I only learned about that today when I was. What are you doing? You walking up to your weed. <laughs> so. Same guy's walking up to a weed dealer and asking for a fourteenth of weed. <laughs> like, I just want a snap, bro. Can you just pack me a snap, please? <laughs> I'll sell you my kid. We got we got to work out something. That was a bad trade. Snap, snap is the name of the food stamps, <laughs> like supplementary nutri- nutrition assistance program. Uh, yeah, so fitting that while intoning the South Philadelphia Walmart, you should make mention of the SNAP program, which is never abused, and nobody ever walks up to me at any grocery store in Philadelphia and and says something to the effect of, yo, White Bull, you paying cash for those groceries? And let me tell you, I never say, why, yes, I am. And then they never say, yo, I got 80 bucks on this car. Give me 30 and we cool. And then I certainly never walk around the store buying all my groceries with a full-fledged crackhead uh, and then uh, scanning them and then letting him pay as though I'm his <laughs> social worker or some bullshit. And then we part ways, having done a voluntary free market transaction of funds that were stolen. <laughs> I remember when I, when I used to live in the ghetto for about, about a year when I first moved out here at the Food for Less, like I I just put all my groceries just on the counter, just like you're supposed to do. And they're, they kind of like look at me and they're, they sometimes they'll ask me like, um, did you want this aside? And I'm like, like, you know, like things that aren't covered by food stamps. I'm like, no, like, what are you, what are you talking about? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Wrong. <laughs> no, just put them all together. It's I okay. get racially profiled more often. I'll, I'll, I'll have a, I'll have a, uh. You know, a good like forty, sixty dollars worth of yak or whatever on <laughs> on, on on the belt. And is that covered by Snap? To... Yak? It better be. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it better be, or I'm going to write a strongly worded letter to my representative. Uh, but th- what they'll do is they'll survey the numerous and sundry groceries that I've put upon the belt. And they will gaze deeply into my very Caucasian eyes and say unto me, will that be debit or credit? (laughs) And I will shock them by pulling out some cash because, yeah, I like to use cash for things. You're going to pay with that with uh, EBT? I don't don't even know what that is. It's free. Swipe yo EBT. It's free. (laughs) Swipe yo EBT. You're you're familiar with this video. Yeah, I think that's only in California that they call it EBT. I don't think they call it that out, or at least where I am. But I, and I, also, I, some I of the places where she is in the video, where she's uh, like parading around, like uh, about where all the places she can get free food would never be allowed in Pennsylvania. She's at McDonald's yeah. getting EBT. Oh my god, I can't even. Like, so the Kensington McDonald's is a hellscape as it is. I could not even imagine how absolutely nuts it would be in there if you could literally pay with food stamps, because. Uh, <laughs> It, yeah, it's absolutely nuts. Although I would save so much money because every time I'd go in there, they'd be like, "Yo, man, I got four dollars on this card. Like, g- give me a dollar fifty, and we cool." <laughs> and then I'd have to go there like I was the guy's social worker and uh, show him how to order two McDoubles or what have you. But yeah, yeah. If, if that was even, I know I've seen We'd that probably in California. still get raped for sales tax. Yeah, I, I used to see that in California, like EBT, and I never kind of understood. It. I was like, "Oh, so I guess it's a new way of paying," and then. I was like, no, that's that's the new word for food stamp. Like, oh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that, but um, yeah, if that happened, you know, if that uh, if that happened here, I'd be tempted to be like, oh, let me see if I qualify. Uh, I could use a Big Mac every once in a while, just just for free Big Macs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then uh, then my diet like would be kind Mac. of yeah. Oh well, actually, I'm not even on my diet anymore. I, I took it off. Um, I'm on hiatus right now, um, sort of. I'm still kind of keeping my calorie count down, but I lost too much hair, man. I couldn't even, I had to shave my beard off because it got too thin. So 
Well, oh, 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 yeah. See, all the fat dudes that I interact with don't have any facial hair, so. Uh, That's an Asian thing, though. Oh, right. so good. Yeah. Right. yeah. That, is, that was racially <laughs> motivated. Did right. I ever tell you that that's one of my favorite phrases in the entire English language, racially motivated? Mm. I love it. I love the term racially motivated because racially motivated necessarily implies that there are people who are racially unmotivated. That have racist <laughs> tendencies, but like they just can't work up the motivation to do anything. Someone knocks on their door. They're like, yo, man, like we got a family full of Mexicans moving on the block. Come on. We got to We got to stop them. And be like, Judge Judy's on, man. Like, come on. So if you have like uh, ye- Asian fever or, or yellow fever or whatever kind of like jungle fever or something like that and you're like interested in only one particular race would that be considered a uh, racially motivated too like oh i was hitting on this chick because it was totally racially you've got a racially motivated dick i'll tell you that (laughs) all right okay so so you're basically you're 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 my penis my penis qualifies as asian not like on a a size wise but in terms of like it's (laughs) it's 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 been born and raised in asia now that That is racist yeah yeah, it's it's racist to talk about how my pubic hair smells like soy sauce, and that is not radio friendly. <laughs> it's the kind of thing we don't discuss on the Freedom Fiend. That's why we talk about it here. <laughs> yeah, that's why we. Yeah, this is why we Lulbert. So, so is there this like a is high concentration? Is there a high concentration in Delaware? You just got back from Delaware. Like, what's the deal with That's Delaware? Correct. Why why all these trips to Delaware? What is the deal with Delaware? Yeah. We go Seinfeld on you. What's the deal with Delaware? It was the it was the it was the first state, and I figure if I'm going to root out statism, I have to go back to the scene of the crime. <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah, you keep going there. You're just you're gonna you're doing that much oh, yeah. homework. There's a, there's there's a dude I'm da- there's a dude I'm dating that lives there. Aww. Yeah. he's he's a no, sumo, it's not, qu- fully it's qualified. Not, it's not odd because he's a white supremacist, but he's Asian. <laughs> So we have another. Uh, what's her name? Ah, oh, what is her name? What is that crazy lady that always talks about Hitler on Twitter and talks about uh, the alt right and white supremacy? Even oh, she's, Tila she's, Tequila. Tila Tequila. I, I'm, I'm in fact dating Tila Tequila. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, she, Tila she, Tequila. She gained some she's weight. Vietnamese. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd be all over that. She gained, uh, she gained I, some I, weight. Yeah. The clip got a little bit bigger. <laughs> I'd go. I'd go. I. I'd take her all across to any corner of the flat Earth she wanted. Oh shit! That's right. She's. A I actually saw. I I was present when she was pelted with Fago and rocks and anything else people could get their hands on to throw at her at the gathering of the Juggalos. True story. It was one of the funniest things I'd ever seen in my entire life. And you went. Keep in mind that I, I I go to comedy performances for a living, and it was still one of the most hysterical things I've ever seen. So you you went? Did you get to meet uh, uh Joe? Did you get to meet Joe Goes? Badge of shame. Nope. No, nope. Yeah, you got to check him out nope. next time because he he's always there for some reason. Even though I don't think he, I, I cooked think he hates for you. ICP when they came to the place where I worked two weeks ago, though. Oh, in the assault kitchen, the assault kitchen two point yep. I, <laughs> I gave I gave Shaggy two dope a bolo tie also. Nice, nice. Yeah. So I don't know if ICP is going to start wearing bolo ties all the time. But if they did, I am laying early claim to having started that because I am a shitty hipster, as people inform me every time I choose to ride my bicycle anywhere. So you got you got the hipster thing going on, but yet you listen to country. Is that an ironically? You ironically listen to no, country? No, I, I legit love it. Yeah. And I just like you. I legit love insane clown posse and I'll debate anyone on that. Debate me IRL right now, bro. Oh, that's uh, that's I can I already I already know the secret to winning all debates and yeah, there's the you're you're a fucking white male that that's easy but with this one I, I have to do is just say fucking rainbows, fucking magnets out of work. No, yeah, there we go. It, you're 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 thinking of the magnets first of all, but secondly, uh, you know my next two lines of argument, which are going to be, uh, why don't you go out and make a better uh white rap. Uh, murderous clown album <laughs> and uh what have you done for liberty uh, <laughs> what if, have you ever done for liberty <laughs> uh 
Insane Clown Posse. I made fun of the long side night. Quality. That's what I did for Liberty. And and I'm going to tell you something. We're like eight te- steps closer than anyone else that to Liberty. That movie's a social disease. Yeah. Good God. <laughs> I, I fixed so, that problem somebody sees, somebody sees it and they, they, they say, holy <laughs> shit, you need to go watch the mall scene. Don't watch the entire movie, but watch the mall scene. People go, they watch the mall scene, and they're like, holy fuck. They're like, the rest of this movie is going to be absolutely fucking nuts. And then they go, they start watching it, and they say, all right. Uh, what the fuck just happened in that classroom? Because that kid definitely did some sort of video that had absolutely nothing to do with anything <laughs> that was rap. And then the teacher praised him for it, and I have no idea what's going on. Let me watch for another five minutes, and boom, next thing you know, an hour and 20 minutes of, of your life is gone. But it's not the last hour. It's not the first. It's not the last hour and 20 minutes of your life that you're going to lose to this shit film. No, 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 no. Because what you're going to do is you're going to talk about what a shitty movie this is, and you're going to say, And you make a three-part series on YouTube. Maybe you make a series on YouTube, or maybe you just put it on social media. Hey, I just saw hashtag alongside night. What a bag of shit it was. <laughs> and then the director will engage you personally and throw arguments such as I threw at you earlier. And what come debate me. Liberty? Come debate me. <laughs> we'll do a debate screening. me IRL. Uh, That's how we got into IRL. all this. Yeah, debate me yeah. IRL. De- debate me IRL right now, bro. <laughs> Sabres or pistols? I tweeted. I'll duel you. Debate me right now. <laughs> Yo, don't don't even tweet at me. So the comedians in Philadelphia. So the part of my Facebook feed that isn't filled with anarcho capitalist is filled with uh comedians in Philadelphia that I've either worked with or done shows with or just have the misfortune of knowing in a lot of cases. And today the feminists in the Philadelphia comedy scene are mourning the lack of Facebook likes on something bemoaning how somebody is allowed to have a Facebook page while having opinions and a history they don't like. And they thought that he should be banned from Facebook and their crusade to get someone banned from Facebook. I thought you were likes. talking about that girl that just had her, was it her YouTube channel removed? Um, Who had her YouTube channel removed? That uh, is a crime against free speech. Hashtag my free speech. I can't remember how to pronounce her name. Um, what what is it? I don't know. She's some sort of Trump supporter, and there was a big campaign to get her thing taken away, and it worked. And I think Onision had a lot to do with it too. If you know who that guy is, I'm sorry, but Greek God. No, not that. that. <laughs> he's a he's a vegan YouTuber, and his his channel consists or his fan base consists of mostly like 16 year old girls who don't know how to think yet. You know, they only read Teen Bob magazine and want to vote for you know Bernie because they saw that spread with uh, Hot Carl and and the Burn uh, at the beach. They 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 don't they don't have the refined listening preferences of Lalbert's listeners. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you that. We conducted a study and we showed that the listeners to this show are the smartest, most urbane listeners in all of Liber Pair. Lib yeah. Pair. Liber Pair. That sounds like a racial slur. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Libbers. Damn Libbers. used to be a good neighborhood until the fucking yak farmers moved in. Like <laughs> until the goddamn moved right down the street. In. Yeah. That's, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. That's I, our word. <laughs> Walmart bunnies. All right, that that might have been too far. <laughs> That's a little birdily motivated. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot where I was going with that tangent. Um, That's low Bertle. Yeah, forgot where I was Lol going Bertle. with that tangent. But uh, yeah, this- making up words sucks. Stop making up words, everybody. Uh, yeah. You don't need to keep on. We got plenty of words. Just learn to use the existing ones we have better. Uh, you know. But, the, um, but how will we define twerking? Oh, yeah, just shaking your ass. That's all it is. It's just shaking yeah. your ass. Like yeah. They've been doing ass twerking shaking. forever, but they just called it shaking your ass, shaking your booty. And now now that's a word. Yeah. They just they yeah. trying to get around to making a word for it, and it's not really. Well, uh, you like to shorten things, you know? Like, it's much easier to call someone a celebritarian than a douchebag and con man in the Liberty Movement, <laughs> you know? <laughs> A guy with the shitty podcast or quote unquote podcast, uh, which is yeah. basically just a YouTube hangout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some dog shit audio uh, coupled with uh, absolute insane megalomania. Uh, everything just revolves around you and like your three hundred friends. And <laughs> I think that's about how much I have on <laughs> on Face Beef. Anyway, is it three hundred? Bless you, all of your grinds. Every single. 
three hundred of you I, that are I did, listening to this show. I did reach the, my thousand subscriber mark, and I got oh, my. That's hot. Yeah, I got my my, my one thousand subscriber mark on YouTube. But I don't really care about YouTube because YouTube's kind of just something I want to do for fun. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm not there to make money off, it, or maybe it's nice getting a hundred dollars every five years. <laughs> but for the most part, like I just kind of do it for fun, and you know I don't want to be one of those like oh I'm a professional YouTuber I like the amazing atheist and then you know a video surfaces of me with a banana in my butt. Uh, that's not that's not the career path that I want to go. But some people want to go. Eh, whatever, but um, but I made, probably I already working in a produce section if that's the case because you've already sublimated that urge. Mm. Yeah, see, I, I implanted it now. Now it's tempting. Wait, you implanted a banana in your butthole? No, what? No, in You've my got a major revelation on the show, folks. No, huh? just that oh. thought in my brain, and now I'm looking in the oh, produce section. Now, next time I go to the produce section, I want to be like. Mm, that cucumber looks pretty. Be like big. fifty-nine cents a pound, more like fifty-nine cents a pounding. Am I right? <laughs> ah, fiddlesticks! I think. I, yeah. No, you didn't. You didn't get drowned. Um, you didn't get drowned. You got I drowned for drowned, a second. I just bombed. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, but we got we got the whole joke. Okay. We're good. Um, yeah, but we, you know, like we, maybe we that one will really that really hit my uh, my pee spot. I think. I think that one will really hit my pee spot. How much is that a yeah. pound? <laughs> yeah. Go, walk up to the produce people and ask them. Uh, comedian friend of mine has this entire fictional life based on him living in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where he has like social media mentions of like going to places in Sioux Falls and he routinely calls into all the Sioux Falls radio shows and gives his opinion on happenings in Sioux Falls. He's he's been there once for a day uh, and will talk about their, you know, Canadian football, everything they love in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And uh he has this fictional girlfriend who works at a produce shop in Yankton, South Dakota. Is her name Produce? So, uh, her name's Produce Tara from okay. the Yankton High V. And we bless her grind and uh we plug the passive aggressive hour, the other podcast that I'm on. She, she in the special Olympics too or Liberty Oriented. God forbid your you your iTunes feed should have a show that is not 100 percent pro non-aggression principle all the time but should you be so adventurous the <laughs> passive aggressive hour is not a bad podcast it takes you a couple to get into the the whole groove of what they're doing but yeah yeah there's, i've been looking for for other other podcasts out there and i did find one they, they talked about this on the fiends and I tried to give them audio advice, and they were kind of like, yeah, we'll see what we can do. They're trying to be really nice. Oh, is I'm, this newborn libertarian? Yeah, and it's, it's to be fair, like I was listening to it like on my phone in my pocket while I was at work. So I could kind of uh, – but even still, I can kind of tell that it was really bad audio. And then when I listened to it in my car, I was like, oh, this is this is dog shit quality. But the show was entertained. Like I was uh, entertaining. I was entertained the entire like time I was listening to it. But in the back of my mind, it's like, this sounds bad. And if I were to – if I were to – listen to it on my, my my car stereo or you know in my home stereo or headphones i would have probably turned it off in the first five minutes it was it's that bad it sounds like there, someone had like this really kind of like crappy uh you know those little mini miniature tape deck things that people used to listen to things in class like record in class like back in the 90s you know what i'm talking about the yo, little miniature cassettes yes 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 the micro cassettes yeah and it sounds like someone took one of those and recorded someone like in the next room over in a Skype conversation. It was that bad. And I was but even still I was like I was entertained by it and I was like, Hey, you know, like what are you guys using for recording? Like the, the sound quality isn't that good, but the show is great. What's going on? And and then of course Michael Dean kind of I probably ruined it, but <laughs> but uh either either way, like hopefully Yo, they'll listen can, to me. Can I'm I make an sure. audio confession on this show? So uh, is this about I've the panic never... hour? It is not the panic hour. Okay. And the, the audio was not that bad in the panic hour most of the time. We, we were in like a an actual studio okay. uh, that we paid for. So the panic hour didn't have all that terrible audio. I've been on plenty of shows that did have terrible audio, but never consistently. Passive Aggressive Hour has good audio too. However, there is a show that I listen to on a five times a week basis because it comes out every weekday. And it's on Blog Talk Radio and I continue to listen to it anyway. Wow. Okay. This this has got to be in who who could that possibly be? Bangthebook.com. What is this? They, 
Bang, B-A-N-G, bangthebook.com. Okay. Bangthebook.com is a sports gambling website, and every day they give their breakdown of the day's wagers and betting angles and things of that nature, and they have on writers, and the writers that they have on have similar dog shit audio. I reached out to Adam Burke, who hosts the show, who's a fellow Clevelander. Adam Burke, if you're listening, bless your grind. And I have told him of the joys of Fiend Phone. And his problem with Fiend Phone is that he can't do it live with Blog Talk Radio. And they have, they do have a couple thousand subscribers on uh, Blog Talk Radio. And they were one of the, I think they're in the top 50 or something like that in total downloads on Blog Talk. Which leads me to another point. Blog Talk used to have an iTunes feed. And it was the top 50 most popular shows on Blog Talk Radio. And it was the most fucking random shit with the worst audio and it was the best thing to go to bed uh listening to uh because it's just like like, white noise yeah Yeah. because it was a lot of it was like the audio was so bad it was almost white noise and you'd wake up in the middle of the night and people would be discussing the most random insane shit there was one show that came on repeatedly that was air traffic controllers that were pissed off at the air traffic controllers union and also the FAA and also the Transportation Safety Board and and it was just a call-in show for pissed off air traffic controllers. And were they mad at Ronald fantastic. Reagan still or Yeah. Okay. And there there was a lot there was a show that played Liberian pop music and the Liberian pop music always sounded like you were listening to it on a fucking radio in Liberia, like from someone's cell phone that they're holding up to the one radio in the village. <laughs> Uh, like you're an ancient alien, but, like you're an alien from from light years away who's getting this transmission from a thousand years ago. Like, oh, what is this Liberian pop music? This is interesting. Hey, yeah, yeah, kind of. Hey, yeah, yeah, kind of. Hey. We come around. Hey, yeah, not kind of. Hey. Yeah, there's a, there's kinda, hey. one show that I associate Blog Talk Radio with, and I will always do it. And that is, uh, there's a sh- there was a show called V Radio, and he keeps retiring and coming back, but it usually he only comes back to beg for more money. And he's a zeitgeister. He was a former libertarian. The show used to start out as a libertarian show, and he because he ran for Congress and did poorly even for the Libertarian Party. Uh, and he he yeah, that's he, impressive. Yeah, and he, he did terrible, and because he's a, he's a horrible human being. He lives in a trailer park. And you know his life consists of basically begging for money, but that that money dried up because people found out like how how much of a sociopath this guy is, and so his money dried up, and now he has to like start his his actual career, you know, back at McDonald's, and he's like thirty eight years old, you know, and he's just now starting his kind of career, you know, climbing the job market, and it's like, oh my god, are you serious? Um, but yeah. Moral of the story is don't don't listen to Zeitgeist. That'll be your life. So, uh, <laughs> Blog Talk Radio. Blog Talk Radio, Zeitgeist, and Steve Venus. So I would like to give everybody an update on Steve Venus. I think I mentioned him on Lawbirds before. Steve Venus is a uh, person that I met at Occupy Philadelphia where I also met James Babb and also met Mike Randazzo and uh, Mike Salvi and a bunch of other like very solid people that I could t- – that I- I consider friends to this day, but I also met Steve Venus there. And Steve Venus had an ebook about how uh, all the tragedies of the late 20th and early 21st centuries were happening in a pentagram formation across North America. And if you plotted them out, they formed a perfect star. And uh, the Illuminati are doing this. And the way that you stop them is you get a wand made of organite. Uh, and you go by bike to every single place, and you cleanse the Illuminati energy of it, and then the <laughs> Illuminati will be reversed, and so forth. So he gets on his bike. He goes, he bikes from Philadelphia. He starts in Philadelphia, cleanses a bunch of Illuminati energy from uh, the art museum. And you know, you might think that. Like, this is absolute horseshit. There's no way he's ever going to succeed. But I will tell you, he was every bit as effective as a bip strong. And he gets on a bike. <laughs> That's saying and, a lot. And, uh, <laughs> b- bikes, bikes 90 miles, goes to New York, goes to Ground Zero, uh, cleanses that cleanses Ground Zero. Then he goes up to Sandy Hook. And uh, he gets there, and he finds that the closest he can get to Sandy Hook is is this graveyard that's owned by an Episcopalian church 
like a quarter mile from the spot, but you can apparently see where the elementary school is, whatever. And he goes into this church graveyard and he starts waving his wand around and yelling because such is his custom. And uh, I'm sure the bereaved the, families are loving it. But go on. And the the minister goes up and is like, yo, man, like, you all right? Like, y- you got to get out of here. And uh, an incident occurs and uh, the cops are called. He's told that he has to leave San Diego, Connecticut, because, quote, very powerful people have said that he has to leave Sandy Hook. So he's up against a a bigger issue than he thought. So he gets on his bike, goes to New Haven, uh, cleanses the skull and bones at Yale University, like right out of Yale, just gone. Uh, Took the building and everything, too? Yep. Everything just boom, gone right away. Okay. Uh, Then he starts biking up to Boston. The marathon does that. Then he's then he has to take the other part of the pentagram. So he starts biking like across like upstate New York, at which point someone makes him so mad in a Facebook argument that he diverts from the star formation and bikes back to Philadelphia for the stated purpose of beating the fuck out of them. (laughs) (laughs) Because, you know, in priorities, right, the Illuminati's got to wait. Someone's talking shit. Yeah, dude, the Illuminati never had their their notifications blown up that bad. Um, so he comes back to Philadelphia, has no money to like continue his biking journey and then just stays in Philly for a while. And then he just sort of hits the road. And here is the latest update from Steve Venus, whom I recommend all of you friend on Facebook. Uh, his, there might be a couple people named Steve Venus. He's the one with the, uh, fucked up looking hat. Here it goes. Last night on shrooms, I channeled the grim reaper. He complained to Eric about what creation had forced him to do and that nothingness is the true God. That creation itself is evil. He explained all of it to me flawlessly, and it's too deep and long for me to explain it all here. But bottom line is that the Grim Reaper's pissed because God stole his power and immortality and turned him into the slave that deals in death. Grim Reaper is the true God because he was the mind of nothingness which engulfed everything all before creation existed. Anyway, my new name is Death. Death Venus. (laughs) And I'm channeling the Grim Reaper, and he's pissed at all the death creation that made him that creation made him deal with. If I know you personally, we need to talk. Grim is giving me power because we are on the same mission. How do you not elect this man president? It's better than Austin Peterson. It's definitely not better than Austin Peterson, right? Yeah, yeah dude. Not as good as Joy. So. Not as good as Vermin. Yeah, but ah, I do like Joy. Yeah, yeah, you're not gonna top Joy. Mm-hmm. I looked into that a little bit. Yeah, per your recommendation, Joy's great with Becky. Yeah, 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 but yeah I'm yeah. sorry, I still have. Uh, I still and have also, Becky it's also worth noting that Steve Venus is the author of uh, six ebooks, and Steve doesn't understand how plagiarism and citation works. So about eighty percent of his ebooks are copies and pastes of websites uh, that he just threw into the book. Pretty oh, much, like uh, tell me he's got a co- copy of Time Cube. Then I he might, but he was panhandling in Philadelphia after when he when he ran out of money after he came back for the Facebook fight, and his message of spreading the gospel of Organite City because his ultimate goal was to build an entire city made of Organite. Uh, his goal, his, the way he would spread the message was by asking people for change. And then after they either gave him change or didn't, he would offer them a free copy of the ebook. And I'm like, I don't think that's how people choose what literature to read. <laughs> uh, hey, man, let's spare some change. Nah, sorry. Oh, all right. Well, do you want a free copy of my ebook? Uh, why, yes, I do. I certainly would like to hear your thoughts on the Illuminati now that I know that you need money to live. Uh, <laughs> you, you certainly have all your ducks in a row. Let me hear more. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, He's like Tony Styles that aimed too low. <laughs> it always it always ends up at Tony Styles on the Lawberts. Every time you're on, we end up talking about Tony. Some people so are just some people are just Lawbertastic, and like there's him, there's he who cannot be named, there's Berwick. Like there's a couple like go to figures that are just c- consistently hysterical, and like no amount of dumb shit that they get, that they do is gonna make me think that it's not. Yeah, you know, Berwick's a literal flat earther for God's sake. Like, he, how far is he removed from Steve Venus slash Death Venus? 
D- does does he even think that the Earth is flat? This this Venus guy, Death Venus. Uh, I'm not so sure he thinks it exists. I think he's one of these, there's no reality people. Oh, okay. Uh, So he's a nihilist. He believes in nothing. No, I I don't think strictly defined you could call it that. Um, Of course not. Existentialist? I think, think, (laughs) well, yeah. Like, closer to that, because I think he thinks there's a parallel reality, and this is like a shared delusion that we're all having. Oh, so the Truman Show or The Matrix? Is, are we going down this? Yeah, oh, level? yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I, in his in his ebooks, the Matrix comes up. By the repeatedly. way, you know what really offends me is when people say that they took the red pill. Because anytime oh, I, I yeah, imagine somebody like, ears. I can imagine like there's like some secret guy that's like, hey, I heard you want to know the truth about feminism, and I'm like, yes, I do, and he's like, here, take this pill, or you can take the blue pill and live in live in your your delusion. I'll be like, okay, I'll take this, and then I just end up in a really shitty sci-fi movie. An overrated shitty sci-fi movie with with kind of half-ass philosophy. Um, I've honestly never seen it. You've never seen The Matrix. I've never seen any of the Matrix movies. They don't hold up. They're not that good. Don't let anybody tell you that they're great because they're not. Because you're gonna watch it, especially now, because they you yeah, know the so same well. people that the same people that told me the Matrix was great were the same people that thought Scream was the greatest movie ever made. Now, see, so... Scream was fun, but you but it was it was dumb. Scream was okay, but it was very dumb, and it was not see, anything I, fantastic. I love it. Was dumb like movies. a two star movie. I could get down on oh, some. My Biodome. favorite movie is Pootie Tang, for God's sake. Yeah, oh, Poo- I love Biodome. Uh, <laughs> Biodome's great. Freddy Got Fingered is simply a. Freddy Got Fingered is fantastic. It's a yeah. cinematic masterpiece. And by the way, when I run for mayor, one of my central. Th- well, not one of my central, but one of my side things was definitely like, you know, we need to have. Freddy got fingered on Blu-ray because it's 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 you know it's the current year and it's still not the on South Blu-ray. Park movies fantastic. So, well, uh, South Park movie that wasn't considered one of the worst movies of all time. To be fair, uh, Biodome and Freddy Got Finger are, and they're wrong. They're wrong in every sense of the word. Uh, people wrong. people people also people also panned Pootie Tang. They yeah, they didn't like it. It came out a week before 9/11. What are you gonna do? Yeah. It's been a while since I'd seen that yeah. one. My dad was really into it, so that says a lot. Yeah, my dad really likes all those kind of cheesy B movies, but he never got into that Pauly Shore. Pauly Shore movies are okay, but definitely Biodome was some. some you some like crap. the Yahoo Serious collection? I, You're a fan it, of the the works. Of the Yahoo last Serious? time, okay, the last time I had seen Young Einstein, I was little, so I don't remember much of it. But I remember my sisters were obsessed with it. Uh, for whatever reason, and I do remember there was the big plot was there. He was trying to figure out a way to have beer with bubbles in it. That's about all I remember. And he kind of, and I keep putting um, um, carrot top in in, oh, in my mind every time I think about that movie. It's been that long, and I keep imagining him looking like carrot top and not Yahoo serious. So, does carrot I have top to go and show in Vegas? That. Yes, oh, uh, I think he still does a show. But la- yeah, last time I checked, he was at the uh, Luxor. Oh, I bet you I could get into Carrot, Carrot Top show for twenty bucks. It's the <laughs> it's the Luxor for God's sake, and it's Carrot Top, and mm-hmm. it's it's it, the the year's current. Like he's not too he like, yeah. Give give it five more years of the year getting really current, and he'll be in like Gallagher territory because he told some really offensive jokes back in the day, and it's only a matter of time before like video services and there's no statute of limitations on saying things that are offensive by modern day standards. So. Yeah, yeah. But that's Car- why but- Andrew. That's why Andrew Jackson's a piece of shit, and Abraham Lincoln isn't. <laughs> well, Abraham Lincoln doesn't exist. Um, it didn't exist, yeah. But but uh, speaking of terrible shows, the Luxor, um, Chris Angel had to redo his whole entire show because <laughs> he was doing it with Circus de Soleil, which normally is, there are good shows from what I hear. I'm gonna go see uh, Mystique soon. I hate them. I think it's the worst bullshit. And th- I, this I, is coming. This is coming from somebody who routinely has sex with men. I think it's bullshit. Uh, <laughs> I think it's overpriced. <laughs> like, yeah, like they they do some like cool gymnastic shit, but like, okay, and like, how much does that get you? Uh, how much entertainment like is there is there really from? And it's such like a small portion of the show, and the rest of it is so pretentious and so faux French, and. Yeah, like really take my scrotum and lick it, circus. Yeah, they're 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 French, uh, they're uh, Canadian frogs. 
Um, but I, the, the the views represented by Steve Miller Miller do not represent those of the Lulberts, <laughs> the Lulberts podcast. Uh, sorry, Jeff. But um, anyways, I'm, uh, hopefully I'm going to go see it. So I've never seen a Cirque Sto- Soleil show. But this is supposed to be like, it's not even really a Cirque show. His show was never really a Cirque show. I um, can see how Chris someone Angel. would like it, but I don't like it because I'm show folk. Yeah. And, and you know how and like how, I think how tribal it's people can showmanship. get. You know how people, how tribal people can get for someone they find sexually attractive. You know, like sixteen-year-old kid girls see, you know, Chris Angel, and yep. they're like, "Oh, he can never do anything wrong." Well, if you go to the Yelp reviews for the old show, <laughs> like you'll see, like all these little sixteen-year-old girls going, "I love Chris Angel, but God, this show is garbage." <laughs> and I, rem- I had remember because I take walks because I like to take walks from Excalibur all the way to uh, to Mandalay Bay and. Excalibur is right in the middle because it's all indoor, all air conditioned, uh, and you could just you know you could walk for hours back That's and cool. forth. Yeah, and it's nice. It's you know, and you don't have to walk in the hot desert sun. And and I, I remember there was one night that I walked out, and they had all they had all the people coming out from Chris Angel show, and there were people at the box office angry, wanting their money back, saying it was a shit show. <laughs> but he had to retool that whole show, and it, it seemed like the only reason why he still had a show is because he had a contract with them. So, fuck Chris Angel. Go see Penn Damn, and yeah. I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah, it, it was terrible. I want to read these reviews now. That's fantastic. Yeah, the Yelp reviews for them are are they're entertaining. Uh, uh, there's there's a couple other places. In, there's like a record store in Vegas um, that also has like nothing but terrible reviews because I what, there's not there's no prices on any of the records. And if you go and see, you ha- the guy like says he knows all the all the all the prices, so you have to ask what the price is. And he'll, he'll follow you around and be like, you sure you don't need help? You know, he's one of those kind of uh, micromanaging his customers. <laughs> and, you know, he'll usually uh, like quote yeah, a price nah. that are that are that that's way too high. And you can go like, oh, well, I found it on eBay uh, for like $20 cheaper. Can you like give me a deal? And they're like, nope, just buy it off eBay then. What the fuck am All I right, doing in the cool. store? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yep. Have a good day. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Just, I'm tempted just to go in there to see if that's all true, but it's it's universally panned. And there, there was a couple people I talked to when I was going to record store day, and they're like, "Oh yeah, that's true. That place is terrible. Don't even waste your time there." <laughs> like, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, there was Dang. that place, and then um, that's got to be some kind of record. Yeah, but there's not a lot of bad shows. That, but you don't like Cirque, so I guess there's a bunch of bad shows here then. Because most of the you got Carrot Top Vegas. though. I would love to see Carrot Top. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, yep. And there's a couple comedians that have shows out there that uh, that that I like from just as somebody who was really big into stand up in the '90s. And I'm waiting for uh, for uh, Billy that's the Mime Purgatory. I'm waiting for Billy the Mime to come out here. And I just had a big argument with with uh, Jeremy, and I'm gonna have an argument with him later tonight when I do the Lulberts because yes, mimes suck. But to say that all mimes suck is factually inaccurate because Billy the Mime is one of the greatest entertainers of our time. Billy the Mime is great. He's a he's a mime guy. You know he does everything in mime, and he starts out holding like a piece of paper that says something like, um, you know, Anna Nicole Smith or um, or the football coach and the uh, <laughs> is it the football coach and the ki- and the child, uh, and you know, he does like a, a show about uh, a, a routine about the <laughs> the Sandusky uh, <laughs> uh, sex case. And Paterno, um, and it's completely like it's so offensive to people. Like, but it's hilarious. It's almost like a satire on mimes. It's the funniest thing you ever see. If you go and look up like Billy the Mime, Michael Jackson, he does like two routines, and it's so funny. It's but it's funnier than anything George Carlin has done, and I stand by that statement. <laughs> Billy the Mime is better better than George Carlin. It's that good. But I'm I'd you know love to see Billy the Mime, yeah. Yeah. So you have Billy the Mime. I am waiting for him to come out here, but yeah, we got Penn and Teller, Matt King, um a whole bunch of great shows out here. A whole bunch of great shows. Anybody who says that Vegas doesn't have good shows, they're lying. They just don't have encores because the stage times are all tight. Mm-hmm. So most shows that you go see in Vegas, there's people are like, Oh, like they bring out their lighters and shit, and it's like, dude, it's not coming, like they're gone. Uh why don't you go play some slots or yeah. whatever? Besides, how are you yeah. going to top, you know, Penn and Teller shooting each other? There's there's no encore to that. That's it. <laughs> yeah. They're shot. The yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Oh, and remember, remember there, there was this one Penn and Teller show where they had these three clowns with them. And the whole gig was that one of them, like, you really, really wanted to punch the clown in the face. 
Um, but I think it was Teller wasn't there. I think it was just Pet. Oh, I'm thinking of the Libertarian presidential debate. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one are you talking about Johnson or Peterson because I, I, oh, I am Peterson by a long shot. OK, so here's the thing. Like, you, I, you don't care enough about Johnson to punch him in the face. Peterson, like you look at that dude and like it, 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 knowing absolutely zero about him, you want to punch <laughs> that dude in the face. And then when you get to know him, you're like having people like, yeah, like, like stop me, stop increases. me. I'm climbing over everybody. Yeah. I don't care if there's security. I don't care if Secret Service is here now that Jerry Johnson has 10 percent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna punch this guy in the face. That's just all there is to it. But Johnson just nominate or picked his VP pick, and it's a a Republican governor from Massachusetts who like is now talking about like oh we need to make some concessions on gun control and we need to block certain types of guns. I'm like, you guys, this is a libertarian ticket you're running on. You know that right? <laughs> like, are, are you are you supposed to be on the Greens? Gary Johnson like really wants me to hate him, and he's doing a good I job. Think, I want to like him. Nothing. I could think of nothing absolutely more poetic than the Libertarian Party getting some pro gun control candidates to try to get their number up so that they can get federal money. Exactly, but they're they're that's supposed what's to be... happening. That's what's happening. That's but, funny. That's you're... absolutely hysterical. Yeah, but they're not supposed to be ciphering Hillary Clinton supporters off. They're supposed to be ciphering. All the never Trump people. That's what they're supposed to be going after. But they're not. They're just Hermaderm. Who gives a <sighs> shit? It's not like they're gonna win. And it's not like uh, Yeah, of course yeah. they're not gonna win. But like you have if... to be huffing to like come up with any sort of scenario where they like absolutely But if they want win. that 10%. And I'm, I'm, I live in Kensington. I know what you're gonna have to be on and you're gonna have to be yeah. huffing. And if you're gonna if you wanna have the fifteen percent that you need to be in the debates, you're not going to get it from Hillary supporters as a libertarian. Because as soon as you say, eh, you know what, maybe we shouldn't tax the rich so much, you're dead. You're gone. You're out of the water. You're 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 no longer viable to anyone on the Bernie camp. Definitely not any, and still not. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. By God, I'm so old. I can I can remember when it was Republicans who had like the really strict purity test, and if you didn't meet 100 percent of the, on their like list, then you were gone. And now, it's the opposite. Yeah. Uh, now, like they're running a nominee who doesn't do any of that, and uh, Hillary has to be in favor of a fifteen dollar minimum wage and all these things uh, to appease the burn feelers. Yeah, I remember they were upset. Like, oh, she has she wanted twelve she wanted a twelve dollar raise. I'm like, yeah, but back when twelve dollars was fifteen dollars before the Obama administration fl- inflated all the pr- prices. <laughs> like thanks obama yeah thanks obama ba- banks obama am i right oh yeah you're right <laughs> <laughs> where where are my bankers at where are my central bankers at clap your hands yeah. give yourself a hand folks <laughs> you ever tonight. you ever make interest rates so low that you be papering your walls with the currency ooh, ooh. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> oh god i would i would love 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 to see a black comedian who only does jokes about austrian economics that is on my bucket list to see before i die i don't care if i have to write the jokes myself uh well uh, hey we had and, a rapper and, and, and you and, didn't and, like him you know, you're right he was shit that's why you're you're wrong but it, but, it, wrong. but if you have a but if you have a comedian who because it yeah if you have a comedian who could do good austrian economics humor yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Have Bob Murphy write up jokes. Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bob Bob Murphy can be funny. I just I just got turned on to that podcast, the Contra Krugman John. Oh that yeah, yeah, yeah. Contra Kr- Krugman's great. Even if you don't even understand economics, I understand economics very well. But I know people who listen to it just because Bob Murphy's great. Bob Murphy should have had a podcast long before Tom Woods. Tom Woods is not bad. He's just not as funny. And his audio. Tom Woods gets. is not bad. Tom Woods just reminds me of every old dude on Grinder who wants to pay you for sex. No big. <laughs> yeah, don't don't tell my wife. I live in Kansas, Mike. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's the operative, John. Um, uh, well, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, so I'm still trying to find good libertarian podcasts. There's not many. Every all of them want to kind of nap your. Yo, off. have you heard of the Freedom Fiends? Yeah, I've heard of this show. And like, I did not find the Freedom Fiends. The Freedom Fiends found me. They found my YouTube channel and was like, "Hey, you should listen because we're going to talk crap What's on Molyneux." Hmm. And and when they weren't talking crap on Molyneux, I was like, 
this is still a good show. They're not napping my because I usually when I when I hear like oh libertarian podcast, I know I'm going to hear them go like, all right, so this happened in the news today. Let's see how the NAP applies to it. Or you listen to the Voluntary <laughs> Life. That's a good one. Uh, no, that I need. To yeah, hear. the guy's British. That's a good show. Oh, yeah, a, a British and cap. Is he going to turn into Bad Mouse and go uh, lefty and calm? Bad Mouth Five. That's how you pronounce that, John. John. <laughs> Um. Yeah, but see how I'm discriminated against because I say John John and people don't understand what I'm saying. This is one of the. This is how the ruling class is Philadelphia's. <laughs> how am I supposed to even out here? How am I supposed to even? Years getting more current. You, nobody's heart. You literally can't to even. my to my aid. Yeah, you literally are unable to even. There is a deaf gentleman in Philadelphia who wanted to get started in the improv comedy scene and they had absolutely like nothing no like uh capability like adaptation like for him to get involved in improv at the Philadelphia Improv Theater which is the biggest social justice warrior organization on earth for god's sakes and Whenever a woman so much as says that a man made her the slightest bit uncomfortable, there's this huge inquisition. And this deaf guy said, hey, can you make your place a little more accessible to me, a person who is deaf by birth? And they did absolutely nothing because he was not a feminist with an axe to grind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. So um, shitty movies. What other shitty movies were great? Great shitty movies. Well, alongside Night, that or, uh, the happening. I think we already covered. And alongside Night was not by any stretch great. No, it, it, God's it, Not Dead was a good movie, except not. Oh, I did not see this. Was it was it good bad or is it just bad bad? Uh, it's kind, It's almost good bad, but it kind of goes on a little too long. Left Behind is great. Love Left Behind. Uh, the Kirk Cameron ones, not the Nicolas Cage bullshit. Uh, get, <laughs> oh, what's wrong with the OG. Nicolas Cage bullshit? Come on, Nick, 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 I haven't great. seen it. I haven't seen it because I'm such a Kirk Cameron purist. When, I, when, yeah, I demand Kirk that Cameron my, purist. I Define demand that my pleases. left behind be. <laughs> Yo, uh, so when you see these Christian movies on uh, Netflix and what have you, a lot of them are cast with people from billboards in the Philadelphia area because. Uh, there's these billboards all over and it's like needed actors, models and talent for Christ. And then they have like auditions on a certain day and it's because they need a certain amount of black people like in their movies. <laughs> and Philadelphia is like a good place to be like, how would you like a trip to LA on $180 and to see your name in a movie? And yeah. I mean, then, like, oh, I then they get tricked into being stuff. one of banana man's movies, right? <laughs> yeah. Just like the most God awful shit. Yeah. Literally God awful. God, yeah, God, yeah, yeah. awful God. <laughs> awful um, for God. No, I haven't seen any Left Behind ones. I didn't see the Nicolas Cage ones either. Um, yeah, The Happening. I, I could watch that for the rest of my life. The no, but Alongside yeah. Night. Alongside Night had some had some fun moments. That stars Ron so Paul, bad. right? The Happening. <laughs> I hope. I wish that would that would have really made that would have topped the movie off. No, but they were running away from the wind and plants. That's what it was. Yeah. Plants no, that I couldn't move. I've, I've seen it. That's filmed in the Philadelphia suburbs, like out where yeah. Jim Bab lives, like like in the Jim Bab slash Josie Wales suburban metro area. Uh, out there is where the happening was filmed. There's a couple of Philly shots too. What's that one dog shit one that was in the elevator? That one's downtown Philly. Also, there's a lot of movies filmed in Philly. With, with the elevator, there's a. Is it like yeah. they were trying to D capitalize off the movie phone booth? Phone booth did so no. well. Yeah, pretty much. It was, there were four people in an elevator, and spoiler alert: it turns out the old lady's apparently uh, actually Satan or some shit, and she's doing like some shit with the elevator. But M Night Shyamalan produced it and didn't direct it, and I watched it while extremely baked on marijuana edibles, and it was passable. I don't know. M Night Shyamalan has been producing absolute crap. Like he has his made daughter good. sometimes performs where I work true story oh uh and she's she's a blues singer and she sings like her name's malika knight Shyamalan, m-a-l-e-k-a if you want to look her up she's on the tubes of you and uh she sings like somebody who was taught to sing by american idol where every single note of the song is the most important and if you can't sing something that's okay as long as you bring it girl <laughs> and 
uh, et cetera. So, yeah. But know that going in. But she has kind of a good voice. And her shows kinda, are fun. Kinda, and, kinda, kinda and we, good, we, we just get, a kinda good voice. We get it. We Not get a really. good food budget for her shows. So normally the food is banging when Lily Goodnight Shyamalan does a show at Underground Arts. So, <laughs> uh, big big fan of getting to make crab cakes and things like that at work, where I normally just make fries and bullshit like that. ICP got like fago with chili made with fago, etc. All right, so you you can do some of that deep fried fago, like to do deep fried Pepsi. You can do some of they, that. That would that would be an interesting. This concoction. is Philadelphia, not the Texas State Fair. All okay. right, it's not. <laughs> yeah, we're not in Oklahoma. You, you got to know. I your do audience. a I do a character on stage called Ricky the Carney who knocked up your cousin at the State Fair last year, and it's just bits about knocking up your cousin at the State Fair, and who to thunk? Uh, yo, you it, it, it's 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 full of surprises. This, this bit. <laughs> Well, the only people that you're allowed to make fun of anymore are poor whites, right? So mm -hmm. uh, you might as well you might as well meet the people where they are, and uh, yeah. Well, be, uh, well I, I actually this I found out you can't make fun of some white people who are poor because I made fun of Kevin Logan, who's a YouTube feminist guy, and he's poor. And I was I, I noticed that he couldn't he didn't even have enough money to buy like nails to put up a picture. He had it like leaning up on a table against a wall. And I was like, huh, you're too poor to buy tax for <laughs> tax for your poster. And they were like, that's not that's, that's capitalist asshole. I'm like, really? <laughs> Whatever. Yep. Why don't you just use some that's of this magical wife, white privilege to white cis male privilege to to go and buy some tax, you know. I heard they give away money, the the the, the privilege. Is that, is that what it happens? I think Yep. You just that's one hundred percent what happens. An armless. Well, person. it's and not until you relinquish it, though. That's the thing is like you have to give it up in order to get it. Oh, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a paradox. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's why race is so complicated. We need to have an open and honest conversation that ends with you calling someone's employer trying to get them fired. <laughs> Underfoot. That happened um, recently. Some somebody somebody said they were going to call CPS on a friend of mine because he had written a status about how he was not a feminist and uh they got mad and said they were going to call cps and have his child take it away because it's clear that somebody with such attitudes about women should not be raising a daughter and the environment that the child is raised in must be abusive if he's writing things like this yeah and you you know this yep. shit's absolutely batshit crazy when even obama's like yeah, we shouldn't be trying to ban people from colleges who who are conservatives. Come on, fucking grow up here and <laughs> try to understand your your critics. And I was like, wait, hold on, did did Obama just say that? <laughs> he was just like, yeah, quit being vaginas, just listen to him. Damn. Yeah. Um. Mm -mm -mm. OG. Yeah. So, uh, anything else been going on? Uh, nah, not really. Uh, going on a road trip. You missed uh, the fiends. Going to Tennessee you missed the fiends tomorrow. the other night, All right? Yeah, you missed the fiends. Yeah, well, my computer, my computer was like loading, and then I fell asleep while the computer was loading. Womp womp. I'd worked a fifteen hour day though, so yeah, I got scared yeah. the other night because uh, last night because I, I woke up at about eleven o'clock and was taking a nap, and I was like, hey, I'm not on the fiends tonight, and I double checked. I made sure that I was not on the fiends, <laughs> and then I got a message from. Uh, Jeremy and Michael, and the line was like, you're, you're on the fiends tonight. And I'm like, oh, shit, I fucked up. <laughs> yep. And then I was like, no, I didn't. They were like, oh, you're replying to the wrong wrong thread. Jim's not on the show tonight. I'm like, oh, thank God, fuck. All right, I'm yeah, on tomorrow that, night. That I'm too. good. I'm, I'm golden. Trying to scare me. <sighs> yeah. You're on tonight, though, you said? Yeah. I may drop in. Who knows? We'll see how you're, I feel. You're gonna, you're gonna surprise. You're gonna, you're gonna drop in. We're just gonna hear a fiend. Phone. I might furry it up. Yeah. Squirm plus fiend one. Phone. Yeah. yeah. Um, Curry's uh, Kensington on. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, anyway. did you want to plug some other decent, like non nappy podcast? Nappy. <laughs> nappy. Animals. The black guy who tips is funny. Uh, the black guy who they, tips. Yeah. Oh, it's this guy and his wife. 
Yeah, I, I found. I was like looking up like flags because I'm I'm a bit of like a, um, a flagget, I guess. And I was looking at different flags. I was thinking about getting a Somalia flag, and I was thinking about getting a Confederate flag, just because I like having different flags. Of, I like to collect flags, I guess. And I had I was like, oh, where do I find the Confederate flags? Because most of the uh, retailers have banned it. And I found a website called buy a Confederate flag from a uh, black com or something like that. <laughs> and it was some black entrepreneur guy who was selling Confederate flags for 70 bucks. And he was like, Hey, like, I, I know you guys want to buy some flags. I understand it's, it's hate, not heritage, but you know, buy one from a black guy and you wouldn't feel so racist. <laughs> I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. This Bless is his grind. Yeah. But indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so black guy who tips is great. Uh, I listen to the Zig Ziglar podcast. It's all motivational. Uh, what else? What, what else comes up here? Let me just pull up my uh, my feed, and then it'll be easier. So, Freedom Fiends, which we've mentioned a couple times, and Yak, uh, the Anoko Yak at a list. Uh, clearly, Contra, Contra, Krug, Contra Krugman, Feminist Mormon Housewives podcast. What? Highly recommended. Yes. Uh, they're a little nuts and sometimes I have to turn them off and sometimes they, they really liber trigger me, but it's interesting. <laughs> uh, feminist, feminist Mormon housewives podcast. Uh, someone knows something was really boring and I don't recommend it. It was like the Canadian version of cereal. They all had cute Canadian accents though. Pod runner is a running podcast. Uh, oh, yeah, for, yeah. when you're running the secret oh. to success is. I thought, talking, I thought for, some, for some reason I, I, I had that image in my head that you were talking about the Road Gunner podcast, which is a, which is an interesting show. They're ANCAP truckers. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Or tra Travis, uh, you know, the guy that makes most of the – the other person that makes uh, a bip, bip, bip cop memes, he, he does that one. Um, he's one of the co-hosts, I guess. But, yeah, Seeds of Liberty. Uh, uh, who else? Oh, yeah, Zombies Government trucker. Zombies Government and You podcast. That one's always great. I, and haha, ha, I beat you to the scoop on Civil War. Ha ha. Rub your nose in it. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, the Secret to Success is by this uh, black preacher named Eric Thomas. And someone turned me on to him because he has a YouTube video called I Grind. And it's like, 7 a.m., I wake up, I grind. 11 a.m., I'm there, I'm grinding. I grind, I grind, I grind. And uh, his is interesting, but he, it, it's really repetitive it's uh let's see what else. behind the bets with chad millman is 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 sports betting uh it's espn produces it it's all about the sports gambling industry uh beating the book with gil alexander similar to the aforementioned bang the book podcast so if you would don't like to beat the book you can bang the book uh what's the point <laughs> is about data is i think well, you know what banging is a whole lot more funny than, than beating it you always got to have a friend right let yeah. Me see if I, I, True story. Surviving Scientology. Do you listen to Surviving Scientology? No, there's a podcast about this. Yeah. Oh God, this sounds great. Are it, they still in? It's all. <laughs> it's. Yeah. It's 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 all people that it, it's all like bitter ex Scientologists, and he normally gets them like within like a couple weeks from when they leave. So like all everything's still fresh, and yeah, I li I listen to Surviving Scientology all the time. One of my favorite with ones uh the higher side chats is great it's it's all conspiracy theories and the guy gets high and talks to conspiracy theorists and there's nothing so insane that uh, uh the guy who hosts it uh dave won't won't, won't respond with ha -ha, whoa far out tell me more about that <laughs> and they'll just go into deeper and deeper rabbit holes every time uh what else Passive aggressive hour is my own. Sports gambling podcast is fantastic, and school sucks. And that's that's my entire feed. Now, see, I never got into school sucks just because of the title, because I don't really care about having like it's just like if there was a peaceful parenting podcast, I'm not interested. It, right off the bat, not interested because I don't have plan on having kids. And there's nothing worse than a backseat driver, right? There's no one like worse than saying like, oh, I've never drove a car in my life, nor do I ever plan on it. But you're totally. Uh, you totally are using the turn signal wrong. F fuck you. Shut up. Are you dead? Yeah. Then shut up. <laughs> Did you die? And I'm, I'm the same way with that. So, like, anything about school, uh, like, well, I don't plan on having kids to send into school. So, if school sucks, that's interesting. But have fun. Well, a lot of it is, like, personal productivity shit. Okay. And, uh, 
Yeah, it's yeah. like I I would advise going to their feed and like going through the episode titles and what have you. Uh, but he's good. He's he's he. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, he asked for donations quite a bit, but bless his hashtag try, hashtag you know? please donate. Like I don't. We're like the only yeah. podcast. It's like donate to us if you want. Like I just, I, I could use a beer. Which, by the way, you yeah. need to send me your Bit- Bitcoin and your PayPal thing so I can put it on the site. Uh, I, need oh, get, right, I, need, I need to get the rest from everybody else too. I need to all get. The uh, new I need to get. Air, I need to talk to Lords and get Airbit set up. Oh, dude, it, it's, it's an app. It's great. I, I use it. The only problem that I'm having with it, and, and I, I'm doing this, and now this is like the part of the podcast where I, I'm doing it for just one person listening. Uh, <laughs> it's like I, I wish there was like a permanent code that I could use for that, but there's not. It seems like every time I say like, oh, request money, it creates another uh, ad uh, address. So I'm using a different address anytime. And so what I've been doing is just having my main address from a crappy, the crappy Bitcoin wallet that's usually on the store that everyone sees when they first get interested. In, and then they go, oh, there's better ones like Mycelium. And, and Dangerous Airbit. History is OG as fuck, too. Oh, that, Dangerous History. Yeah, I'm just now getting into uh, – I've, I've been meaning to get into it for a while, but the Dan Carlin uh, – Dan Carlin uh, comments. Oh, I think he's so much better than Dan Carlin, and I will defend this point to the death because oh, he, Dan he Carlin is? has talk radio whole voice and CJ doesn't. Okay. Uh, he, like, there's that there's that extra 5%, 5 to 10% of oxygen that Dan Carlin talks with. <laughs> that, whereas CJ talks like a normal fucking human being. And uh, I, if, if I do wind up at Porkfest, I that's one of the people that I really look forward to meeting. It's like him and Lou Fien are the two big celebrities that I want to meet at Porkfest. Like everybody wants to go and meet Molyneux and Cantwell, or Cantwell and Molyneux can't go. Uh, I'm like, no, I want to take a <laughs> shit next to next to Lou Fien, like Michael W. Dean. Did. <laughs> oh, there, there you go. I can't. I'm not gonna make it, but I am gonna make it to Jackfest. Uh, I'm actually going to meet some of the one of the guys. Hopefully, if he shows up, I'm going to meet one of the guys from the Zombies Government and You podcast. There, hopefully, there's going to be more people. Uh, one of the other co uh, co hosts with Lulberts is going to go with me. We're going to carpool. Uh, I'm going to probably oh, nice. go for just a half the week, and we may record a show if we have the ability to, because there's no electricity out there. It's not like Pork Fest where you're going to be like, oh, we just plug it into a little outlet that's sticking up somewhere. There's, that does not exist. You basically have to ask someone who's got a generator, <laughs> and then running a podcast next to a generator that that'll that'll end well, I think. Um, but I don't yeah, know. We'll try. Sure. I'll, I'll bring. I'll bring. I'll try to bring some stuff. Um, I don't even have a laptop, so I don't know All what right. I'm going to do about that. Um, Oh yeah, Joe Rogan, Stephen Crowder. Uh I like those two. But I li- Oh, Stephen Crowder. Boo. You, you don't like Crowder. Why don't you like Crowder? I, I I disagree with him on stuff, but he's fucking hilarious. Come on. He's hilarious. No, I completely disagree. I don't think he's funny at all. Really? I think I just I I I think he sucks comedically. I don't I don't find him the least bit funny. Okay. Um I haven't listened to his podcast, but I've seen several stand up performances by him and every time oh, I yeah. like I this saw is, his stand up. This is complete and utter dog shit. And yeah, and yeah, if I your seen... stand up is bullshit or if you're like a non comedian who builds yourself as a stand up comedian and your comedy's dog shit, I have absolutely no interest in anything else you do. Yeah, I've seen some of this his This is why I don't listen and yeah. I haven't been not imp- I have not been impressed, but his YouTube stuff and his podcast I do like. That's actually not a podcast. It's, it's actually on the radio. It's on the radio. And they're on in, oh, in okay. Reno, which is somewhere in, in Nevada. Uh, th- which the fiends is not, and for some reason I'm in Nevada, and for some reason I'm not on a station in Nevada. I think where there's might be some bleed over from Salt Lake, but that's about it. We have to yeah. fix this. We need we need to make the fiends great again, and that's not going to happen until <laughs> we're on the air in Vegas. True story. Yep. I think that's all the podcasts that I have. I mean, like I can check my phone, but I'm going to th- take off my headphones and reach over and grab it and come back, and then it's going to be like, oh yeah, we pretty much cover everything. Um. Yeah, so I'm not even going to link any of these. You just have to look up the titles. There's this thing called Google, and if you type shit in, you can actually find stuff on it. It's really neat, so just Google it. Rewind it. <laughs> yeah, and also, if you search if you search like hashtag TBGWT, the black guy who tips hashtag, uh, you'll get lured into the black Twitter uh, rabbit hole, and you'll see this a exists. whole bunch of funny shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. memes and everything, so... Yeah. Yep. yep. Highly recommended. Good times. Yep. Stay away from Blog Talk Radio. Go to yeah, Creamy Radio Audio away. and 
fucking improve your shit. So you won't be like newborn libertarian, which is a good show, but fucking shit audio. I try. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna keep trying. Like sending him like, hey man, this show was good, but it sounded terrible. Like please, sixty dollars, please. <laughs> For just sixty dollars. For just sixty dollars. You can help you can a libertarian help. podcast you... not sound like absolute dog shit. <laughs> we need to we need to get out a really fat uh, blonde haired lady and start doing some infomercials. Sell to it. We, 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 we need to make libertarian podcasting great again. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. All right. Good times. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, the, in this country, and in a bunch of Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about FiendPhone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com, F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com, Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone, I never knew remote audio could be this good.